deadlift. One of our favorite exercises we use for building up the barbell squat is called a hip belt squat. Now we're fortunate enough to have a machine here that gives us the platform and gives us an easy way of loading. However, the nice thing about this exercise is it can be done at any normal gym with just the standard weight belts. Weight belts can be bought very inexpensive online. The one major benefit to this is we don't have to load through the spine. The weight is not on top of your upper back. I'm going to get Megan to get into the, the machine and we're going to show how it's done and we're going to show some of the benefits of this movement. So Megan, if you could just jump into the belt. So when we're doing this exercise, normally the first thing I get people to do is pick the same squat stance that they use with a bar. Ultimately, we're trying to build up the strength in the barbell squat movement. So normally, Megan squats a little bit wider than shoulder width. This is how she does it in competition. And I'm just going to get her to do four or five repetitions to demonstrate how I want this done. So Megan, if you just do a few repetitions. She's coming down lower than parallel. That's perfect. I just want you to slow it down just a little here, Megan. Nice and easy down. Strong cut up. Stay at the top for one second. You'll notice that Megan is moving her arms. The reason she's doing this is she's keeping herself in balance. Now, she could probably do this motion with her hands straight down to her side, but by keeping her arms up, she's able to keep perfect posture and she's able to keep that balance. I'm going to get you to do a few more repetitions here, Megan. Again, she's going nice and low. That's perfect. Maybe two more. Great. One more. Fantastic. I'm just going to get you to stay here for one second, Megan. Now, some people, they're going to have an issue even breaking parallel on this movement. This is going to have a lot to do with your leverages, most specifically how long your femurs are. Megan has fantastic leverages for squatting, so she can do a full squat. We always want you to use the fullest range of motion whenever possible. The other exercise we like to do, which is really just a slight variation, is we like people to get a much wider stance. This tends to put a little bit more stress on the glutes and hamstrings and a little bit less on the quads, but it still works the entire lower leg. So Megan, I'm going to get you to come up to a nice wide stance. Now with this stance, she has her toes pointed outward. When she comes down, I don't want you to do it just yet, Megan, she's going to push her knees in the same direction she is pointing her toes. So I'm going to get you to do a few repetitions here. Nice and low. That's perfect. As she comes up, she's pushing her knees out doing a very good job of keeping perfect posture, nice and upright here. Good, I'm going to get you to do one more here, Megan. Perfect, that's fantastic. Just let you sit there for a second. Now, if Megan was a little bit taller, had a little bit longer torso, there may be a little bit more bend forward, even though the weight is loading down low. That's perfectly natural. Again, everyone's leverages are going to be a little bit different. The other thing I very much like about this as assistance work some people, they have lower back injuries. And we've actually had people that they squat competitively and not in the gym, but maybe at work or they were in a car accident, they have hurt their lower back. They can no longer do a barbell squat. The compression on their spine of the bar sitting across their back is too much for them. With using a device like this, they can continue to strengthen the lower body. They can continue to squat and make progress. And we find that as we rehabilitate the lower back and we're able to go back to barbell squatting, we can then get them real close to the weight that they left off as opposed to them losing quite a bit of their strength. The other motion that we can do with this that I don't have uh, set up for Megan is we can do what's called a box squat. Now, at a lot of powerlifting gyms, a box squat is a major movement. Some of the strongest powerlifting gyms in the United States swear by this movement. We don't typically do it here because of safety considerations. Basically with a box squat, Megan would be doing the exact same motion that you see, except there would be a box or a chair or something that she can sit down on, normally right about parallel or a little bit below parallel. She would then come to a pause on it. Some people just touch it very uh, softly and come up. Some people actually like to sit down for a second or two or come up, and there are benefits to training this way. But with a bar on your back, you're literally putting your spine between a rock and a hard place. You have, a spine, you have the bar across your back. It's loaded, normally several hundred pounds. And when you come down to a dead stop, it is compressing your back. This is unavoidable. Now, with proper training, people can do this safely. They have shown to do it for years without any damage. But there is a higher risk of injury doing this. By using this 
hip belt squat mechanism, she could sit down on the box, she'd get all the benefit, but there'd be no compression in the spine. So again, a very simple movement. You can just use a low pulley. Um, you can do it on any cable machine if you have a box that can elevate yourself. Or some people, they even just stand on a platform and they just hang free weights between their legs with this exact same belt. So you don't need this very nice mechanism that we have here. Belt squatting, it's a fantastic motion. I hope everyone can do it. It's great for developing the legs and it's great for helping increase your free weight squat for competition. The first set of accessory work that we're going to look at is for the squat. Now I want to say that when we're doing accessory work for the squat or we're doing accessory work for the deadlift, a lot of these exercises can interchange. The same major muscles are being used in both movements. Now just for showing different movements, we're going to focus mostly on the quadriceps or the major muscles that consist up the front of your leg for the squat movement and we're going to look at the major muscles of the back of your leg, also known as the posterior chain for the deadlift movement. So starting with the, the squat accessory work, we're going to use what's called a hip and quad machine. Now, if you don't have a machine like this at your gym, because it is kind of a specialty powerlifting device, you can interchange it with a leg extension, um, a free weight sissy squat, or even a Roman chair. Most of these exercises will be at your typical gym. First thing we're going to do on this, I'm going to make sure that Valerie's feet are secured down, which we've done before we turn the cameras on. Now when she leans back, what I really want Valerie to focus on is keeping her torso in line. You're going to have a natural tendency to want the upper body to move around more than it should. I want her pivoting at the knee and the rest of her torso staying straight. So Valerie, I'm just going to get you to do a couple reps. She's going to come down, she's going to come down about parallel with the ground, right about there. Come on up. That's perfect. You can see her torso is straight, straight up and down. Come on down again, Valerie about parallel with the ground, and it's her front of her quads, the front of her legs, pulling her up. That's perfect. Now stay here for a second, Valerie. This is a good range of motion for most people, but Valerie's conditioned to this exercise. I know she can use more range of motion. As long as there's no discomfort in the knee and no discomfort in the hip, I want you to use the fullest range of motion possible. So Valerie, I'm going to get you to do one very deep repetition here. I'm going to come right down, right down. It's well below parallel, come up nice and strong, front of your quadriceps, pulling the weight up, that's perfect. Now, on the flip side of things, if you did feel some discomfort in the knee, or you just weren't comfortable going that far down into the exercise, you can shorten the range of motion up. So, Valerie, I'm just going to get you to do a quarter rep. Keep coming down, and right about there, torso staying straight, she's pulling up with the quadriceps. That's perfect. So, again, if you've never quite seen an exercise like this, a leg extension machine, it will build the same muscles, it will work those muscles extremely hard. It is something that we always do when it comes to squatting. We're always trying to strengthen up the, the quadricep muscles. Very, very important. development. So Mike, I'm going to get you to lay back. So whereas on the competition lift, Mike might come out far wider with his grip, I'm going to get him to come about a foot apart, maybe just a little bit wider with his grip. So grab this nice and tight, Mike. So I'm just going to help Mike unrack this bar. Now there's a couple things that I want you to pay attention to. When we do a competition bench press, we might set Mike up with a very large arch in his lower back. He's going to be flat back through all of the accessory work because I want to create as long a stroke as possible. This is going to make the exercise harder. It's going to challenge the muscles more. So Mike, I'm going to get you to come down low on your chest and pause there. So again, everything is very tight. Come up nice and strong, Mike. Now, I made that pause a little bit longer than it needed to be, but every single repetition we do here, we are going to do a one second pause on the chest. So Mike, give me two more reps. Pause, push up. Perfect, come on down, 
pause, push up. Good, we're gonna come into the rack for a second. So a couple things to keep in mind. When you're watching Mike do this lift, he's not flaring his elbows out. You never wanna do that in a bench press. It's gonna put a tremendous amount of strain on the shoulders. It could potentially hurt his rotator cuffs. Now, when we do this set, we're looking for around eight to 12 repetitions. When I'm getting someone to build up their strength in a competition bench press, we tend to work in a lower rep range. That's because in the sport of powerlifting, you have to be good at your one rep max repetition. For the accessory work, however, we want to do multiple repetitions because we're trying to build up a fatigue in the muscle. Again, this time we're looking at the triceps doing the majority of the work. I'm gonna get you to do a couple more reps here, Mike. Again, grip is in a little bit narrower. Come up to the middle, unrack. And he's gonna come low on his chest. One second pause every time. Pause, push straight up, perfect. Come on down, pause, straight up. Great, into the rack. This is gonna be a tremendous tricep builder. We tend to do a lot of bar work with our lifters when it comes to building up the bench press. The second accessory lift we're gonna use for the bench press is called a pin press. Now we're gonna set the safety catches up a little bit higher than we would when he was normally doing his uh, standard bench press exercise. The idea behind this is we are going to come to a set pause on the very bottom. Now in the previous exercise, Mike paused on his chest and that weight was transferring into his body. On this exercise, the weight is gonna transfer into these safeties. So when he pushes up, he's gonna have to push from a dead pause. This is extremely challenging on all the muscles that you use in the bench press, both the chest, the front shoulders, and the triceps. So I'm gonna get Mike to lay back under the bench. Now the first difference is I get my lifters to use the exact same hand position as they would when they do a competition, competition bench press. So Mike is a little bit wider than he was uh, when he did the uh, close grip bench. Also, he's gonna be flat feet on the ground, flat back. Again, I'm looking to make the exercise as hard as possible, whereas when he does this in competition form, we're looking to shorten the stroke, we're looking to increase his arch, and we're making to the exercise much easier. Because we're trying to stimulate the muscle and ultimately fatigue them, we're trying to make this exercise more difficult now. So Mike, I'm gonna get you unrack here. So when I know he's stable, he's coming to a dead pause, one second pause, press straight up, Mike. Perfect. Come on down again, dead pause, come on up. When he comes to the top, I want him to even hold this weight here for a second. I'm trying to eliminate all momentum. When he comes down to the bottom, hold it there for a second, Mike. He could let the hands go, so this is a perfectly safe lift. He's in no danger of getting hurt with this, but to push up, give him one more repetition there, Mike, it's a little bit more difficult because he's not creating the stretch reflex in the chest. Come on down one more time, Mike. One second pause would normally be okay. If you really want to challenge yourself, you can even do a three to five second pause. Come on up one more time, Mike. Perfect. So some of the main benefits of doing this are it's very, very safe. Because you have these uh, safety catches up, you don't actually need a spotter. You can go right to muscular fatigue, and if, say, Mike was halfway into this rep and he could no longer lift it, he can just lower down onto the safeties, and he's in no danger of being hurt. We like to do these normally near the end of the chest workout. It's a very demanding exercise, and ultimately, we're looking to develop the muscle as much as we can. The final exercise I'm gonna show you that we do for accessory work on the bench press is really just a variation of what we just did. Again, we have the safety set up. It's gonna be a pin press again, but I'm gonna have Mike do it on the incline. Mike, if you could just lean back. I'm gonna get you to unrack, and I'm gonna get you to come down to the safety pins. Now, the first thing I wanna show you that I didn't talk about in the previous segment, we have set these safety pins up so it is as close to Mike's chest as possible. Now, you can raise it up higher. You'll actually be able to use more resistance, but it's not necessarily gonna make the exercise any more difficult. We're trying to use maximum range whenever we can. Let me get you to push up here, Mike. So again, the motion is gonna be very much the same. He's coming down in a straight line. He's got his elbows about 45 degrees from his body. Again, very, very close to his chest. Come on up, Mike. I'm gonna get you to do two or three reps with the proper cadence. One second pause, come on up. Two more reps, Mike. One second pause, come on up. And one more repetition.
Perfect. We're going to come into the rack. Now, normally when I'm training people in the bench press, I only do one of the pin presses. I'll either do a flat or I'll do an incline. We don't normally do both in the same, um, same exercise session. It's not to say that you can't, but we found that when it comes to accessory work, you don't need to overdo it. The athlete will already get quite a bit of exercise just by performing the heavy lift, which in this case is the bench press. We can now go on and we can do some shoulder work, maybe some tricep work to finish off things. But a lot of what we do in here for accessories with the bench press is just staying in the power rack, utilizing the bar, adding a couple different variations on the bench press. And uh, Mike here, he's got a 400 plus bench press to show for it. Um, drug free natural, he's a multiple uh, Canadian champion. And we found that keeping things very basic, just working with heavy weights, consistently going up week after week, that's gonna get you to that strong bench press you're looking for. work, we can literally do accessory work for the hamstrings, the glutes, the lower back, the upper back. Also, most uh, strongmen and powerlifters use some sort of grip training just so they can hold on to enough weight. Now, what we're going to focus on is strength training for the posterior chain, which is mostly the hamstrings, the glutes, and the lower back. What we're going to get Valerie to do, this is called an inverse curl. Now, the hamstring is going to be the dominant muscle being worked, but her lower back and her glutes and even her calves are going to have to activate to hold proper posture and to do this in a proper manner. If you don't have something like this, most gyms have what's called a glute ham raise. You're going to find that the motion is very similar. Now the reason we prefer an inverse curl if you have something like this is we can use a greater range of motion. That's one of the things I really like about this exercise and what we're going to do next is called the hip and back. We're going to use a greater range of motion for these major muscles that come involved in the deadlift than the normal deadlift exercise would provide. So when we're setting up, Valerie's already into the machine. She's gonna push her heels right back. There's a plate behind her, that's what's gonna steady her. There's pads above and below her legs. When she comes forward on the motion, don't do it yet, Valerie, she's going to hook the pad. That's what's gonna keep her in the machine, that's what's gonna give her the leverage to do the motion. When she comes forward, I want her to keep her torso perfectly straight. So I'm going to get you to come down, and you're only going to come down about halfway. Now this halfway motion on this machine is full range of motion on a glute ham raise, typically. I want you to come down just a little lower than that, Valerie. She's coming down, she's keeping her hips straight, and as she comes up, her hamstrings are doing a lot of this work. She's pushing off with the calves, hamstrings are contracting, and her glutes and her lower back are having to stabilize her whole body. Stay there for one second, Valerie. Now, this is good range of motion. I would be happy with this with most people. Now, Valerie is a little bit more conditioned. We're going to use a full range of motion. Whenever possible, I want to use as much range of motion as long as it's pain-free to do so. But again, make sure you condition your athlete or your trainee to be able to do this. So we're going to do a couple full range exercises here, Valerie. Right down, stretching those hamstrings out. Perfect. Again, she's keeping her torso nice and straight. Right down, Valerie. Come on up. Very nice. We're going to do one more. Easing down. Perfect. Okay, I want you to stay at the top for a second. Now, what a lot of people are going to do when they do this exercise or they do a glute ham raise is when they come up, they're going to stick their glutes, they're going to stick their hips back, and they're trying to increase their leverage on the machine. So I'm going to get Valerie to do a couple reps where the form would break down. This is what I don't want you to do. So she's coming down to the bottom. And as she comes up, she's going to bring her glutes and hips back first. That actually still wasn't that bad of a rep. I want you to exaggerate just a little bit more, Valerie. You come down to the bottom, and yes, and you see that motion in the hips. That's what people are trying to do to make the exercise easier. We always want to make the exercise harder. This is a fantastic um, machine to develop hamstring power, 
glute power. We use this all the time for our power lifters. We also use it for those who don't even do the barbell deadlift. If you have something like this, I want you to use it, use it safely, and use it progressively. The last exercise we're going to show is a hip and back machine, or basically we're going to get her to perform a hip extension. Now you might not have a machine just like this in your gym, but most gyms do have some version of this. Now Valerie's laying flat on her back, and the first thing we're going to get you to do is put the seatbelt on, because once the resistance becomes greater than her body weight, her hips would lift right out of the machine. So I'm going to get you to put that seatbelt on, Valerie. Nice and tight. So the way this machine is designed is she's starting too far back. We always want the axis of rotation in the machine and the axis of rotation of, in this case, her hips to be in line, which is down here by the cam. So I'm going to crank her into place. Push her legs into this valve. Good. Okay, so again, on this machine, she has handles that is going to keep her in place. Now, a lot of people, they're going to have a tendency to want to pull against these handles. Actually, what I want her to do is push against them. She wants to keep solid contact with these shoulder pads. Again, the major benefit of this, just like we did on the inverse curl, she's going to get a much larger range of motion for the hips. The hamstrings and the lower back are also working here like the inverse curl. I do find that this particular exercise is a little bit more glute dominant. So Valerie's going to let her knees come back. Again, nice stretch right up to her lower back. Strong push. She's going to hold. You let your knees come back, Valerie. Now these legs are going to stay bent until the last second. She's going to straighten her whole body. Perfect. Easing back. Knees bent. Squeezing with the glutes. Hold. Very nice. Keep a very good posture. We'll do a couple more very good repetitions. That's excellent. She's straightening her legs at the right moment. We're going to do one more correctly. Perfect. Now I want you to come back to the halfway point. We're just going to hold it here for a second, Valerie. I find with most people, it's not so much the contracted position where there may be an issue, but the extended position with her knees coming back, especially if there's some sort of lower back injury. If this is the case, I want you to shorten the range of motion up. So I'm going to get you to push down all the way to the top, Valerie. Now when she were to come back on this one, even if you just come back to the halfway point right about here and push down, this is still a larger range of motion in the glutes than a deadlift would normally give you. Perfect. Come back to the halfway point one more time, Valerie. I'm just going to help you hold it here. You slowly want to come back into that extended position, just like on the inverse curl where I want people to slowly go into the fully extended position. Using the greatest range of motion possible in most cases is going to give the best results. Both of these exercises work extremely well for developing the lower back, the glutes, and the hamstring. I normally only do one of them or some sort of variation of them per training cycle. To do both of them is a little bit redundant because you are working the same muscles. I'm just going to let Valerie out of the machine very quickly here. Let's push off. Excellent. So when it comes to training the deadlift, like I said at the beginning of this segment, there's all kinds of muscles and all kinds of exercise we could do. We could just do lat pulldowns and rows working the major musculature of the upper back. We could do nothing but grip and forearm work, making sure that we could hold on to the bar. But the major muscles that are responsible for the deadlift are the hamstring, the glutes, and the lower back. By using these exercises, whether it be a hip and back machine, a lower back machine, an inverse curl machine, a glute ham exercise, any one of these would be good options. I want you to play around with them. Use all of them if you have access to them. They're going to help you increase your deadlift, and they're also going to help with the form in the deadlift. Once these muscles are strong, keeping that proper form is going to be much easier. You're going to have better results, and you're going to be safer. I hope that the exercises we've showed you help you progress in your training in the squat, the bench, in the deadlift. By adding these exercises in and working the target musculature through a full range of motion, it should speed up your progress. If you have any more questions, please feel free to contact us through our website, www.stgstrengthandpower.com.